um, in Japan identified its first local uh, case of dengue fever in 70 years last month, um, and, and that is basically in uh, October, uh, August. And so this is quite a major thing, and uh, the Japanese government has taken multiple steps to it. And we are lucky today. We we have some our Japanese colleagues, Hiroshi and Shimono and company to to talk about it. Um, so today's program is going to be uh, a welcome roundtable introduction, uh, and um, we have with us uh, a number of people, and I'll go through some of them. Um, then we have a presentation uh, from Shimono. At, um, Dr. Shimono, or, and we welcome uh, Dr. Hiroshi to, to contribute as well. Okay. And then uh, at 4 30, we will have a dengue tools by analysts from Singapore, and then we have a round table discussion and closing. Uh, my apologies to Salim, uh, I misinformed him. Uh, these are the people that have responded. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Shimono from Kyoshu University, Dr. Hiroshi from National Institute of Public Health, Japan, Dr. Rosa from um, Malaysia, and she's coming in on Skype. She's face to face. Hi. Uh, uh, Professor Analyst from Lincoln Cheng Medical School. Uh, Professor Sazali uh, is down there. I can see him uh, from the Department of Medical Bi Microbiology. Uh, Malaysia, Director of the WHO Collaboration Center. Um, Abdullah did say he was coming in, but up to now we have not seen him. Salim came in earlier and I actually misinformed him about the time and I'll, I'll sort that out. And Chris, I uh, guess from the Caribbean, might, have, might be coming in, but I guess he did not make it. And myself is Francis Lee. Okay, without further ado, I will ask uh, Dr. Shimono uh, and his colleague to share some slides with us. So, hello. Yeah. Hello. Uh, this is Shimono speaking. So, uh, let me let me talk about the dengue fever in Japan. So, first, uh, next slide. So, let me show you. The episode last year first. Next. So this is the this is the first reported case of dengue exported from Japan to Germany. So the case is a 51 old female. So she had returned from from a two week round trip from Japan on August 31, 31st. Since September uh, 3, she suffered from fever up to 40 degrees and now they are followed by a macropacular rash. On September 9th, she admitted the hospital in Berlin and diagnosed as dengue. After one week in hospital, she was discharged with total recovery. So next, please. So this is a this is a map in Japan. So she flew directly to Narita, and then next she visited Nagano, Yamanashi, and Hiroshima, Kyoto, and back to Tokyo, and then uh, she she flew back to Germany from Narita, and then she talked later. She was she was beaten by mosquitoes in harvesting grapes. Next please. So so from this from this from this episode last year, the authorities in Japan hit to the idea that uh, we have already uh, we have already had the dengue fever in Japan. So I'll show you the uh, so I'll show you the this year episode. So, but uh, so I I we we live in Fukuoka, so we have not seen the domestic cases in of dengue fever 
this year. So I gathered the data from mainly from the website reported by the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare in Japan. So this is the first reported case of dengue in, in, in 2014. This is the first case. Uh, case is a teenage girl. So she was a student whose school was located in Tokyo. On August 20th, she suffered from high fever and admitted the hospital in Saitama. She didn't have a history to go abroad. On August 26th, she was diagnosed as dengue fever. Next, please. So from this first case, so the, uh, the Ministry of Health, uh, Health, Labor and Welfare gathered, uh, gathered the data, and then this is a dengue outbreak in Tokyo. So M MHFW has reported domestic cases periodically. Uh, they pointed that most patients had visited the Yoyogi Park previously. Tokyo Metropolitan Government checked mosquitoes in Yoyogi Park whether they have dengue viruses by PCR. They closed the Yoyogi Park on September 4th, 2014. National Institute of Infectious Diseases first summarized 67 cases on September 5th. Next, please. This is the occurrence date, uh, this is the occurrence date of dengue fever. So, so you can you can see many cases at the end of the August and then and then early, uh, and the, and in in September. So September the fourth, the the park uh, Yoyogi Park was closed. Okay, next please. This is the clinical symptoms of first sixty-seven cases. Uh, you can see you can see ninety percent ninety percent of patients uh, had fever and then seventy seventy patients had headache and then forty eight patients had rash and then forty five patients had bone and joint pain. There were no severe dengue fever in these case series. Next please. Oh, this is a Oh, this is the number of trapped mosquitoes in Yoyogi Park. So they they selected ten space ten, ten spots in Yoyogi Park, and then they gathered mosquitoes. Uh, so so for example, from one from spot one, they gathered twenty eight mosquitoes, and then PCR showed positive. And then uh, from from four from four spots. They, they get the positive result. Next, please. So this is a, this is a history of the patient. So Yoyogi Park, so the uh, history, history of visiting uh, Yoyogi Park, so mosquito bite, and then among them, uh, history of mosquito bite is a 31 patient. And then this is a this is a this, this is a visiting uh, so this is the data of visiting park or mosquito bite. Next, please. So this is a map of Yoyogi Park, and then they gather the the number of the the number the circle number is a place they gathered they gathered map uh, they gathered mosquitoes. Next, please. And then from these data, they presented posters showing that, uh, so be careful, be careful from biting, 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 biting by mosquitoes. And the next, please. So, and then Tokyo, Tokyo Metropolitan Government tried to kill mosquitoes by spraying in Yoyogi Park. Next, please. And then, so fin finally, Dengue, dengue outbreak finally ended by the end of October, and then this is a summary of summary as of October 31st this year. Next, please.
Next, please. This is a this is a graph showing the domestic cases of dengue fever in Japan. So you can you can see many. Uh, so the date the date is a suspected onset, and then you can you can see many cases uh, at the end of the August, and then and then first uh, and then first in the September. Next, please. And then this is a this is a all cases of 160 domestic cases in, in of dengue fever. You can see many cases. Uh, no, no uh, sorry. So this is a, this is the age and the male uh, and sex and then total. So you can see many cases of young people around 20 20. 20, from 20 to 50 or so, and then you can you can you can uh, you can you can uh, you can see many cases in you you can many many male cases. Next please. Oh, oh, next please. So this is the suspected places we are infected with dengue virus. So you can uh, among among 160 patients. You can see 128 patients uh, visit your yogi park. Next, please. So this is a this is a data from the from the summarized sum, from the summarized uh, my, uh, my, my. so this uh, these are data from the website. So. So Yoyogi Park was reopened on October the 31st. So I I I visited the Yoyogi Park. So I I'm showing showing the Yoyogi Park to you. So this is a Yoyogi Park. So you can see many trees trees and then so very very far very far from the photos so you can you can see people are uh, taking a walk with a dog. Next, please. This is a so you can see many dogs are playing with people in the in the field. So and the many dry fig leaves are there. Next, please. And then many people are gathered together and then to make activities. Next, please. And then in Yoyogi Park, we have a we have a beautiful pond. And then next, please. So we can see many many waters, uh, much waters in in the pond. Next, please. So yeah, very very beautiful. And then red colored leaves are there, trees. And next, please. This is a this is a uh, this is a spring with water. Uh, there remained some waters in the in the spring, so it is it it in the spring does not work now. So next please. So from this, uh, from uh, this is a this is a uh, from my point of view. So this is a Yoyogi. This is a characteristic of Yoyogi Park. So there are many uh, there are many people and then lots of dogs, and then so from all from people are from all over Japan and then from foreign countries, and then in summer they 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 act with their sleeves and then with short pants, especially in summer, and then many trees and bushes with many dry leaves. So offering offering cooler circumstances for so and this is this cooler circumstances is supposed to be comfortable for Aedes albopictus mosquitoes. So and then there are plenty of water and then I'm not sure this this plenty of water is good for good for the mosquitoes for laying eggs or not and then. There are many 
there are lots of mosquitoes in summer. Next, please. This is a picture of Aedes albopictus mosquito. Next, please. So, characteristic of dengue outbreak in Japan. So, this is a this is a local outbreak. Uh, the patient the patient visited Yoyogi Park or at least at least Tokyo. So, vector mosquito is Aedes albopictus. So this mosquito is tolerant to cool, to cli cool climate, different from Aedes aegypti. So Aedes albopictus is prevalent in Japan, and then I think it is very difficult to to kill them. In Japan, uh, located in temperate regions, the mosquitoes are inactive during winter season. And then dengue fever has been unfamiliar for us. Japanese people, Japanese clinicians. So dengue detection kit has not been prepared, prepared fully. So, so now we are preparing for the next year. And then serotypes, serotypes were checked in 11 cases and all were dengue, type, dengue, virus, dengue virus type 1. Next, please. So this is a life cycle of Aegis Arbo Albopictus mosquitoes. So they active, but they, they lay eggs, and then so maybe maybe in winter, so it is uh, so they they live they live they live they they existed through the winter by the phase, by the phase of eggs. Next, please. So. I, this is a this is a possible transmission route of dengue virus. So dengue virus was expo uh, imported in, imported through imported via airplanes or via via ships, and then so infected infected mosquito infected mosquito is a red red mosquito red, red mosquito infected the person, and then they. Uh, the people infected, and then so not infected mosquitoes by the by the people, and then <laughs> the mosquito was infected. But uh, I think this this <laughs> I think this is this is not not usual. So because uh, because uh, this the, uh, it is difficult to explain this root of uh, dengue virus. Next, please. So uh, this might be the this might be the post, uh, probable probable transmission route of dengue virus. So people 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 go abroad very frequently, and then travelers moved from tropical areas via airplanes. Very, uh, and then most people uh, are symptomatic. So they. They visited Yoyogi Park, or be, they visited they visited any places, and then not infect, uh, uninfected mosquitoes bite the people, and then the the mosquito get infected, uh, and the infected mosquitoes bite the bite the other healthy people, and then healthy people get be infected. Next, please. So. So this is so we we can go back to the 70 years ago. So in the last major outbreak in Japan is a historically we experienced a dengue outbreak about 70 years ago. So in Nagasaki and other areas from August 1942 to through 1945, over over 200,000 dengue cases were suspected to be occurred to have been occurred. We used, we used to have many water tanks for fire, water storage ponds and pots in which mosquitoes could increase in number. These water reservoirs were suspected to be the source of the mosquitoes. And then after that, we, we threw, out the, threw out the tanks and pots. And then, next please. 
to prevent dengue outbreak in future. So it is, I think, it is important to control this Aedes albopictus mosquito will be needed, but it is it it will be quite difficult. Prevention of mosquito bite is necessary, especially in summer. So to wear the to wear the long sleeves and then to wear the long pants. Environment management is important. So to 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 so to remove the old tires holding water or litter, bad bad buses or and so on. Aedes albopictus can transmit not only not only dengue but also chikungunya and yellow fever. So increasing international travel has more risk to have local outbreak of dengue or other viruses in future again. Maybe next year. Next, please. So important reminder in future. In future, this year we experienced only type one dengue virus, but in future another type of dengue virus other than type one will be transmitted in Japan. So that means this year we don't experience the severe dengue, but we might encounter severe dengue patients in future because the uh, reinfection with the uh, other type of dengue virus is considered to be a risk for severe dengue. So in future, we will see also, I'm a physician, so in future, so we will, we will see patients with disease prevalent in tropical, tropical areas more, more often. So we physicians and the citizens should know more about various kinds of diseases including topical disease, especially dengue, chikungunya, and so on. Next. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, Mitori. I cannot hear your voice. Ah. You turned off your mic. You turned. Okay, now can you hear? Um, Rosa, could you turn off your mic? Rosa? Now we can hear. Okay. Is it better? Yes. Okay, now we can hear. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Our, our next speaker is going to be Annalise. We'll keep all the questions to the end. Is that okay? All right. So my presentation is more of a theoretical nature, but also uh, related to the Japan outbreak. Uh, but before I do so, uh, a little bit of a background. So I'm um, a professor of infectious diseases at a new medical school in Singapore called Lee Kong Chen School of Medicine. We are part of Nanyang Technological University and it's also joined with Imperial College in London. Now I'm the scientific um, coordinator of a, um, uh, of a grant funded by the European Commission with 6 million euro that looks into novel tools for surveillance and control of dengue. So I work, have the privilege of working with 14 partners around the world and Professor Sasali from Malaysia who is sitting there, hi, <laughs> um, is one of those partners. Um, we have three research areas, one focusing on dengue surveillance, one on prevention of dengue in children, and the last one uh, is now most pertinent to the current discussion, and that is the risk of dengue introduction to uninfected regions like Japan, although in our study we focus obviously more on Europe. Um, uh, this is the, an open access article that describes the whole study design of this four-year project funded by the EU. Uh, but now I want to focus on research area three, where it is about air travel, mobility, climate change, 
um, that poses an increased risk of a dengue introduction and emergence in currently uninfected areas. Theoretically, conceptually, you need four factors which we call the dengue transmission tetrahedron. So you need susceptible population, obviously, people. You need the vector. For the vector to exist, you need a suitable environment and climate, and you need the virus. So in uninfected areas, you don't have the virus, so the virus needs to be imported. But let's focus on the vector for first, because the vector, uh, i.e. those mosquitoes are known to be in tropical and subtropical areas, but not so much in temperate areas. So the question is, can it survive also in temperate climate regions? So for this, we introduced a concept called vectorial capacity. Vectorial capacity, uh, capacity describes a vector's ability to spread the disease to other humans. So basically, it presents the average daily number of secondary cases generated by one primary case. Now, for, for the vectorial capacity, you can use the very famous and well-established ross macdonald equation. Five parameters um, feed into this equation. And these are vector mortality. So the longer your survival, the higher your vectorial capacity. Your intrinsic incubation time, so the shorter your in intrinsic incubation time, the more uh, proliferation you have of the mosquito, thereby more transmission of dengue. But also other factors like the daily biting rate, probability of, of human to vector, and also the other way around, the probability of vector to human transmission of the dengue virus. So five parameters feed into this equation. Um, that every single parameter is temperature dependent. So it's climate sensitive. Your survival rate improves with a certain temperature, for example. So we used all the data from the existing temp uh, literature uh, to feed into a temperature-driven um, um, uh, equation. Uh, so depending on the, on the temperature curve, you will get an improved vectorial capacity. A higher vectorial capacity indicates a higher potential for dengue epidemic. We call it DEP, dengue epidemic potential. And temperature is a very important factor. So what we did was um, we showed the effect of temperature and its daily fluctuation on those five parameters of vectorial capacity. Um, so we used temperature-driven temperature models of vectorial capacity, and uh, we used all the um, climate data, the global temperature data from the past 100 years and the predictions for the future climate scenarios. Um, um, so we did predictive um, values. So, so again, so we use relative vectorial capacity to estimate dengue epidemic potential based on temperature and also diurnal temperature variation. Now, so we found that in cold to temperate climates, um, if you have a very high diurnal variation of your temperature, you increase your vectorial capacity, even if your mean temperature is not as optimal as in a tropical country. Diurnal temperature variation seems to increase over the years, over the decades. So this, um, this map here that you see in front of you shows you the vectorial capacity. So the more a red it becomes, the more, the more probable it is that you have dengue epidemic potential. Now, if you look at this, Japan, although still a temperate region, is actually already quite suitable for Aedes aegypti and Alphabictus. Um, so we published this in this paper, which you, which you can read up. It is um, open access in, um, in PLOS One. Um, 
So now we looked at, um, at a dengue outbreak that happened in Madeira in 2012. Now Madeira is a small um, island um, which belongs to Portugal, so it belongs to Europe but at the altitude of, of North Africa, so you can see it here in the picture. They had their first outbreak in 2012. In September, the first cases were reported, and it peaked in October, November, and then, and then dwindled off, and they had more than 2,000 cases. Now, they have, Aedes aegypti was introduced to Madeira in 2005 or seven. I can't remember, and so it took a few years, and by 2012, they had their first major outbreak. So the vector was there, then it also had to be imported. So this is just to show you, then we did the calculations for vectorial capacity for various European cities. Um, and just to show you, the black one is Singapore, where I live now. Singapore has all year round a very good high vectorial capacity. The red line, is Madeira. You can see overall the vectorial capacity in Madeira, which belongs to Portugal, is lower than in Singapore, but can be is quite sufficient in the summer months. Um, and so, and, and the same for some other European um, 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 cities. So, if you introduce Aedes, the vectorial capacity based on climate is actually sufficient to have dengue epidemic potential. But you need more than the vector. You also need the virus introduction. So for the Madeira outbreak, we looked at the travel volume to Madeira from dengue endemic countries. So for example, although Thailand has a very high dengue endemicity, the interconnectedness to Madeira, so the travel volume to Madeira is very low, meaning the risk of, of importing it from Thailand is far lower. So looking at the travel volume, we found, as you see from this map, that the highest travel volume is from Brazil and Venezuela. So then we developed this very simple equation where the importation index, ID, is the multiplication product of the incidence of dengue in the originating country times your travel volume. So the higher your travel volume, the higher the risk of importation. The same you could actually also calculate for Japan. Where was it imported from based on the dengue incidence in the originating country times the travel volume to Japan. Now for, for Madeira, we found it was Brazil and Venezuela. They were the two leading countries. Then we looked at the monthly importation index and we found that it was far higher for Venezuela compared to Brazil, which made it suggestive that probably the outbreak in Madeira was due to importation of dengue by our travelers from Venezuela. And indeed, we did dengue sequencing and we could show and prove that indeed the dengue virus was from Venezuela. So very interesting finding that we published in Eurosurveillance um, a, few, a few months ago. In February 2014, it's also open access. You can read it. Um, so in summary, I think I want to end up here. We can, we can also use the same kind of a mechanism, first of all, to calculate vectorial capacity in Japan under their temporary climate conditions. We can also calculate the travel volume to Japan to, um, to estimate, to assess the most likely uh, originating country for the Japan outbreak. Thank you for listening. I can't hear him. Thank, thank I, you, Professor Annalise. I hear you. Uh, sorry. sorry. It, it just takes a while to... Uh, Is it okay? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. okay we, we, I have to really thank our two speakers, uh, Dr. Shimono for sharing with us the Japan side and uh, Professor Annalise for sharing with us uh, the research work on dengue tools, which seems very related to each other. Um, with us is actually someone that I would like to 
bring forward is uh, uh, Dr. Hiroshi, NIPH uh, Japan, uh, who actually oversees the policies in, in Japan on, on the dengue fever outbreak. Professor Hello. Hiroshi? Yes. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. Yes. Oh, my name is Hiroshi Mizushima from uh, National Institute of Public Health, uh, which is a uh, national institute. Uh, Japanese government uh, under the Japanese government uh, Ministry of Health and Welfare, and actually we are doing the public health. And however, uh, uh, as Dr. Shimono said, uh, actually in Japanese government, the National Institute of uh, Infectious Disease is handling about the infectious disease. So, uh, as a public uh, health, uh, 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 we are we have to handle. However, in this uh, dengue virus. Uh, National Institute of uh, Infectious Disease is doing their work, and uh, as I was asked to make the presentation, I prepared. Uh, I just returned uh, from a uh, long overseas trip y yesterday, so uh, I was not able to prepare uh, until now. However, I, I, today uh, during the meeting, I made uh, several uh, ten or twenty slides. However. I heard from Dr. Shimono that my presentation is very much similar with uh, Dr. Shimono's presentation, so it was no use. Uh, I think I don't have to do my presentation because uh, he did already, and so I uh, will just uh, make uh, some comments. That the thing I think uh, we can think is that, uh, I, and also uh, that network. Uh, was a little bit uh, uh, not good today. So, uh, first part of Dr. Shimono's presentation I missed. So I'm I want I wonder whether it was uh, in his uh, slides or not because I didn't get his slides yet. So I'm not sure if he already did the presentation. But uh, I want to comment. Uh, I prepare these kind of things, but. And uh, so I just want uh, to say about uh, this. I don't know. Oh, this one. So uh, I think uh, Dr. Shimon already did the presentation. But so these are the numbers. Uh, the the number of the patients per year in each uh, years and. As you can see in Japan, uh, we have plenty much of uh, patients with the dengue every year. Uh, however, they all are infected. So, uh, about the care about the dengue, uh, we have some knowledge and we don't have to worry. Just with big, uh, big, uh, the fact that there was an outbreak in Japan, so the domestic infection infection was the first time to happen in Japan. So, as a and public uh, health. Uh, issue. Uh, we just have to handle this dom uh, domestic infection part, and not about the care of the the U.S. And for this reason, I think uh, I, we are uh, together with the public offices in Japan because our local health, gov uh, gov local government health uh, staff. We educate. So within the education program in our institute, uh, we have to think about what will be the best way to overcome this kind of situation. So that is something we we have to think about. So I think this only this slide uh, is enough for me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hiroshi. Can you hear me? Okay, nope. I, I, I can't. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, Professor uh, Dr. Hiroshi-san, uh, 
for sharing with us the information that it was the first time that it's actually a domestic spread of the dengue fever. Um, any comment from um, our other participant? Anyone? Yes, I have one question. I read somewhere that Aedes aegypti was found, I think, a few years ago. And um, I just want to make sure that Aedes aegypti is, according to your opinion, definitely not associated with the 2014 outbreak, or did you also find Egypti in addition to Alba Pictus? What did you say, the Egypti? Yes, I read that Egypti was introduced or found in Japan a few years ago, but the current outbreak in, uh, in, in Tokyo was related to Albopictus, not Egypti. I just want to ask whether you also found Egypti in the current outbreak. I, I think it's a type of mosquitoes, right? So, so we, we have two Aedes, Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus. Yeah. And Aedes albopictus was found in, in your Yogi Yogi Park. But did you also find Aedes aegypti? I'm sorry. So, sorry, I can't hear you, Hiroshi. Hiroshi, I can't hear you. Hello? Hello? Okay. Oh, for me, I, I, I am sorry, I don't know about that uh, point, so I cannot answer. Maybe Shimono? Dr. Shimono, know, Dr. Shimono knows about it. So, so hello. So, uh, I think this outbreak is associated with uh, Aedes albopictus, not, not Aegypti. So, I think, uh, I'm, not, I'm not an expert, but uh, I think it is quite difficult to to uh, it is quite difficult for Aedes aegypti to to live to live in in Japan in in the climate under the climate of Japan. So 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 in in the in the in the in this in this in this climate. So the Aedes 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 albopictus is very, very, very uh, is is to, uh, is very is tolerant to cool climate, so it is very easy to to transmit the dengue virus. I think so. No, I think I I I I have not heard uh, current in the current outbreak. So Aedes aegypti was not found. I guess we are not sure whether it was there or not. Um, yeah. So according to our calculations, in the summer months in Japan, Aedes aegypti can well survive, but obviously not in the winter. Um, so, uh, so if aegypti does get introduced, you know, it 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 can it can um, uh, multiply, it can replicate in the summer months in, in Japan. So, so uh, yeah, I think so. So, so j Japanese climate is, is getting higher. Uh, the Japanese temp uh, t the temperature in Japan, in Japan is getting higher in summer. So, it, it, it will become possible to, for, for the, for the Aedes, Aedes aegypti to live and they multiply in summer season, but uh, it is very dangerous for us. <laughs> Thank you very so, much. Uh, so for for the for the Aedes 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 albopictus, so it is it is quite difficult to 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 keep the activity in winter. So at the at the end of the at the so in this season, it is, we can we can we can see we can see any mosquitoes in in the climate in the climate of Japan. 
But I think we can learn from the Madeira outbreak. You know, Madeira also has a winter, and when the outbreak uh, started, was it September, October, November, and then it also declined because of the winter. Thank you. Uh, can I ask, I mean, what are the precautions or what are the steps uh, are taken care so that when summer comes, uh, Japan is well prepared uh, for this dengue? Uh, repeat my question again. I mean, what are the policies or precautions uh, taken by uh, Japan in preparation for the summer months? No. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I think that, uh, the government, uh, each local government, and uh, also the, uh, the national government, is uh, announcing very much about. Uh, can you can you hear? Yeah, no? but I think uh, you say the local government is what? Oh, the go local government and also the national government announcing and uh, promoting to be careful about. Uh, uh, the mosquito bite. Okay. Nowadays, uh, not much more than before. Okay. Even uh, if, uh, we all already ended with the outbreak, uh, we are supposing, like you can see in uh, the, 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 these slides. Yeah. Okay. Now, so it, it's just that in Singapore, it seems that we are fighting an endless battle. We have quite a lot of promotion going on um, that even uh, talk about using mosquitoes against the mosquitoes. Um, and we just don't seem to be winning much of a fight. Uh, so, Zali, your analyst, would, would you want to comment on that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, in, uh, I heard that in Singapore, it is uh, against the law to have some water in the garden, I think. And uh, I was very much interested in about that. And so in Japan, we don't have that kind of thing. However, local government trying to remove uh, the water as much as possible. However, uh, people don't care so much about uh, that. Okay. So, Sali, want to say something? Uh, I think as far as thank you, Kato, is concerned, this is the best time now. You can't hear. It's very soft. It's still very soft. You need to be closer, I think. The microphone? Yeah. No. No. I think you need to increase the volume a bit. The microphone. No. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, maybe this, this headset is not working then. No, okay. I think this is the best time for Japan to control dengue because once it's established, it's difficult to get rid of uh, the disease itself. And uh, I do not know whether uh, just focusing on mosquitoes alone is sufficient because I noted that. Uh, only 90% of your patients actually have fever. So what happened to the other 10%? Do they present without fever? And uh, what the a possible asymptomatic patients in the in the population and the prevalence of the local population? Do you have any idea at all? Can you hear me? Only you. Yes. Yes. Oh. So so I. I get the, I, I pick up the data from the website, so I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I don't know, I don't know the process, precisely. So, so do you have any idea, Doctor, Doctor Mizushima? So, uh, I don't. I, I have my colleague in the National Institute of Infectious Disease, and they have some uh, uh, kind of a local data. However, uh, we cannot use those 
data, so uh, I cannot say. However, I think uh, there are still uh, those people who, has, uh, as uh, suddenly said, uh, there's people there's, uh, with no symptoms, so the, those carriers we have to ha uh, be careful about. However, the transmitting mosquito already, I think, uh, in Japan uh, has this uh, in a low active period of season. Today, it is very cold here today, and we are now using the heater. Uh, so I think uh, this season we have uh, got the control already. Okay. So, oh, Shimono, so I, I hit the idea that, uh, so dengue fever has a character, so this disease has a characteristic of the so decreasing the platelet or dec decrease uh, so the change of the blood test so so i i have some some patients have the uh, doesn't doesn't have doesn't have the fever and then when he, when they recovered during during they recovered they presented the platelet decrease in in the in the in the blood 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 test profile, so I think I think some people some people some people visited uh, visited in business for that reason or so I I'm not sure <laughs> that just uh, just imagine. Any comments, Sazali uh, or Anne? Dengue. Dengue is often um, you know, ranges from very from undifferentiated mild fever to severe disease. Um, the rapid decline of platelets is very characteristic, but not specific for dengue. Um, and a rising hematocrit is quite characteristic and also quite specific for dengue hemorrhagic fever. A lot of dengue cases get missed. Uh, because the, it often presents as a very mild, self-limiting fever. So in a case of an outbreak, usually you only see the, the tip of the iceberg. Uh, I think that's what I'm alluding to. Perhaps there will be there are more who actually got infected, but just does not present it with a symptom. I mean, in 2013, when you had your exported case to Germany, you must have had ongoing circulation of the virus. It probably did not get diagnosed because they all presented with mild disease and, and nobody thought of dengue fever at the time. And then, you know, a few days later, they all got better. Yeah. Because I noted that your diagnosis of the first case also, I mean, the second one is it takes six days for you to do the diagnosis. So that's a bit long already. I mean, by then, there are probably others who are already infected also at the same time, and just that they never present to the hospital. So in Singapore, to share a little bit what we do in Singapore, when we have a cluster of two cases within 100 meters, 150 meters, we uh, they go actively in and um, and do vector control at other side but also the breathing site larvicidal um, and um, in addition to their ongoing nationwide uh, vector control so that's reactive and ongoing routine vector control dr takuma san is there from Shiawa University, any comment? We, we can't hear you. Are, are you asking me? Um, Dr. Rosa from Malaysia. Yeah, hi. hi. Sorry, I, I, I cannot uh, log into the video. I just um, hop, hop in at the Skype with uh, Francis. So in Malaysia, actually, when, when I look at uh, 
professor analyst uh, studies in the 13 cities in Malaysia we have the similar pattern which the dengue increases uh, during um, in the month of July and August and we have the similar pattern in Malaysia. Did you all hear that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dr. Rosa, for updating us on Malaysia situation. Okay. Uh, Takuma, Dr. Takuma, any comment? We can't hear you. Can you hear? So, uh, now I can hear you. So, I had I had from Takma. So mm -hmm. he experienced uh, he experienced dengue fever this summer. So, so uh, he can he can present the, the case. <laughs> so be, before the outbreak, before mm -hmm. the outbreak. Have a, before the outbreak, he had Dr. Takuma had fever, is it? Can Can you hear? I I I didn't catch what you're saying. This is Dr. No, Takuma. I can't hear Takuma san, Sensei. すみません、エクスキューズミー。高間先生、音は聞こえておりますので、そのまま話していただいて大丈夫です。インショインショユニバーシティホスピタル。あ、オッケー。あ、オッケー。えっと、え。August 9, the 32 female uh, were by the mosquito. And they, and she, she had a fever and better to discount. And uh, admitted a uh, hospital 19 August to 23rd, but um, we didn't find it. But the matter the, then the outbreak was um, fine. The we checked and uh, then virus. Uh, no structure antigen. We find positive react uh, September first. So uh, she is not the, any problem. Okay. Um, I, I guess you're relating a, a case to us, right, Sakuma-san? Today. Uh, uh, I was trying to to think what what you said. You're relating a case to us. No, oh, just one case. So, and um, my university is not <coughs> near from the USK Park. So only mm -hmm. one case from a hospital. Okay. But the York Park is a very crowded park, so I, um, it it is possible many people can be bited, but few patients was found. Out. So I why it's not few patients I, 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 I don't know okay. 
explain. Um, Shimono, anything to say? So I have a question for uh, uh, Ms. Arnelis. Can I ask you? So in in Singapore, so do you have do you have ADIS 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 Arbopictus in in Singapore? Uh, mm -hmm. So how much percent of the Arbopictus and then Arbo uh, 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 ADIS ADIS Ediputi? So how much population? <laughs> Um, all right, so, so we have both. Um, Aedes aegypti, aegypti, aegypti is more common carry domestically around houses close to people, whereas uh, Bopictus is more in the countryside, far, further away from people in Singapore. And Aedes aegypti is clearly the much more efficient vector clearly driving the outbreak. Um, Aedes albopictus may be during, between the epidemics, sustains the outbreak, sustains transmission. Uh, in Japan, you know, to see an outbreak with close to 100 percent due to Aedes albopictus is quite unusual. Um, and most likely it is because it was a single dengue Stereotype. It was one. Uh, probably it was imported by a traveler and then multiplied in this area. And because there are so many people there, it had a chance to bite many people in a short time. So it's quite unusual. The outbreak in um, Madeira was due to Aedes aegypti, which is much, much more efficient. So do you, do you think so? How about how about next year? So do you think uh, can can we have the possibility to to the dengue fever, domestic dengue fever in Japan? How what what your opinion? Absolutely, because you have the climate condition for the vector, you have increasing numbers of imported dengue cases, so increasing likelihood for the virus to be introduced. You also have, um, and, and so it only depends, you have already Aedes albopictus, it is very difficult to control. Almost impossible to get rid of Aedes albopictus. Thank that you. sounds very depressing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> What do you think, Sasali? <laughs> we have been doing it for the last three decades. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> we can't control dengue in Singapore. Uh, Japan, of course, you have, if you don't have Aedes aegypti, you will never have a big outbreak. If you only have Aedes albopictus, you will have small outbreaks in your summer months, but not in your winter months. You agree. <laughs> Thank you. Unless someone start bringing it down south, further to Okinawa and so on. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Well, unless you really get Aedes aegypti. So I think your vector surveillance must be very good to identify <coughs> Aedes aegypti because if you have that, that vector, your chance of bigger outbreaks will increase. Okay. Oh, that, that, that's a very good conversation that, that we have, and uh, it gives me a better understanding. I'm not a, a biochemist, bio, biologist at all uh, of this whole issue, um, and um, I, I think the, there are lessons to be learned from this outbreak in Japan, and um, things to share about it. I think it, it's, it's a matter of how to control and contain it. Uh, if we cannot eradicate it completely. Sorry? So uh, uh, actually, um, oh, okay, I got Dr. Rosa. Yeah? Yeah. 
actually there's a lot of things that I want to share, but I'm not comfortable with the system at the moment because okay. the Skype is uh, intermittently interrupted. Okay. And um, hopefully we can exchange our uh, information through email because I cannot, since I cannot okay. go, uh, join the video. Okay. So uh, actually a lot of things that you want to share with the, like the status, the, 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 maybe I can share the uh, PowerPoint in the email yeah. uh, with you all on the Dengue status. Okay. But recently uh, we had a, a Dengue Task Force uh, uh, nationwide uh, in, implemented and it was led by our Deputy Prime Minister. And oh. uh, with the integrated management from many agencies, uh, we, within eight weeks we managed to reduce the number of cases reported in our country. But it must be integrated effort and uh, continuous um, con integrated and continuous effort, and uh, and it must be um, from the vector control, the the environmental uh, cleanliness uh, must be at the in the in a good uh, good conditions then. Uh, then we manage to control the dengue. Otherwise, it is very difficult to control the transmission in the community. Thank you very much, Dr. Rosa. I think what I'll do is even this uh, discussion, we have recorded it and we will we upload and share that among the community. And the slides, if uh, Dr. Hiroshi san and uh, Shimono san say, if you can send to me, we will bundle it and put it under uh, the website. And so that people who were not able to join us this time round are able to at least uh, view and understand some of the discussion that we had. Um, I think going forward as well, I think we maybe want to organize some more specific uh, discussions uh, on, on, on dengue. Um, I know in general, know. Uh, discussion is good, but maybe a more specific one. Uh, maybe useful, but I'm not in the area, so I, I'm open to uh, help and organize the thing. Dr. Hiroshi san, do, do you want to think specific, right? The example that we are using. Hmm. There is some kind of somewhere. There's a microphone on, and I hear your voice I hear twice, voice and twice I cannot, and hear, cannot you. hear you. Oh, you cannot hear me. Can you hear me now? There is some somewhere the microphone on, and I I hear some kind of a congestion echo. in the voice, echo in the voice. Okay. Sorry, sorry about this. On. I only have one system on. <laughs> now I can hear you. So can you say it again? Sorry. Yeah. Um, is there anything specific that uh, you all would like to discuss? For example, vaccine or something like that? Talk about what? What, what did you say? Vaccine. Uh, about the vaccine, I think uh, the, uh, uh, we didn't care so much about making the dengue vaccine, but however, uh, I think it's an international uh, issue to have that kind of thing. So, and also, uh, it, it may, must be very important to prepare that. However, I don't know uh, who is trying to do uh, make it right now in Japan. Okay, I, I can give you an update. It's my field of um, interest and expertise as the uh, principal investigator for the phase two trial. Anyway, so the, the vaccine has been developed by Sanofi Pasteur. They completed the phase three trial. It will now go through FDA approval, etc., get registered and probably be available in 2015. And obviously, the countries should be targeted with high dengue incidence, not Japan. Okay. Okay. Thank you, analyst. Yeah. Um, let's keep this uh, video, uh, the conversation going, and um, so that you know, if 
we need to meet up or we hold another video conference on another topic of, to share with the community, uh, we can do so. We have to thank Kyushu University for supplying us with uh, a facility to, to do this video conference from the leisure of our office. Thank you, Shimono Sansei. Nice meeting you. Bye. 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 Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Dr. Rose. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is that all here?